someone shouted, and I looked across the wharf. There were men working, but they looked different from any I'd ever seen. Their bodies were dark, and they were chewing something red. They dressed differently too, wearing only some pieces of cloth around the lower parts of their bodies. They spoke a language I couldn't understand. Tears rolled down my cheeks as I realized that Singapore was very far from China. That was the opening from a book written by Lim Chiu Mei. She arrived in Singapore in 1932. She was sold to a buyer as a Muay Thai. What is a Muay Thai? Muay Thai was a Cantonese term for young Chinese girls sold as housemaids. The Muay Thai was not paid. The master or mistress owned her. She had to obey him or her. In short, she was a domestic slave. Muay Thai were often overworked, sometimes cruelly beaten and mistreated. Some were even taken advantage of by their masters. But the Muay Thai were not the only unfortunate people who set foot on Singapore. There were many Chinese women who had come before them who were abused by their fellow countrymen. The early Chinese immigrants who came to Singapore were nearly all men. They were either single or had left their families behind in China. Women immigrants were scarce. This was because the Qing government in China did not allow women to leave the country. Also, most of the Chinese immigrants were poor coolies who could not afford to bring their women folk with them. In 1860, the ratio between Chinese males and females was 14 to 1. As a result, young women were smuggled in. Many of them were tricked or kidnapped into coming to Singapore. They were forced into prostitution and worked in brothels which were controlled by the secret societies. These young women were often beaten if they refused to cooperate. In 1884, there were about 2,000 Chinese prostitutes in Singapore. They made up about one-third of the population of Chinese females here. The rest were married women and children who had come over to join their families. 
and the Nunyas, who were Pranakan. The abuse of women began to arouse public concern, and cases of enforced prostitution and slavery appeared frequently in the newspapers. In 1885, a home for girls was set up by the Chinese protectorate. It was known as the Pao Liang Chi. Prostitutes and Muay Thai who were badly treated were rescued, and some of them were sent back to their families in China, while others were given protection in the home for girls. There, they learned to write, read, sew and cook. It was to take many more years, though, before this abuse of women could be controlled. Meanwhile, the child slaves called Muay Thai continued to stream in until 1939. That was why when Chiu Mei came to Singapore, she was immediately sold. She was then nine years old. I was looked at, criticized, and after much bargaining, I was sold for $250. A document was drawn up on red paper and the purchase money was handed over. My master was an old man. Living with him was his second wife, who had been his former servant. In the house, there were also two servants. I soon learnt that a servant had a higher status than a slave. Because a slave had been purchased, the master could do whatever he pleased with her. Mostly, I was given housework to do. I had also to look after the poultry. I had been told that the master craved for female company. It was three months after my arrival in this house that he started trying to visit me at night. I cannot express my terror when I heard his footsteps. A stroke of luck saved Chiu Mei from distress. In 1934, someone made a report to the Chinese protectorate and Chiu Mei was sent to the home for girls and started a new life there. In the 20th century, the situation of Chinese women in Singapore began to change and the number of men to women became more balanced. More women came to be reunited with husbands or parents and another type of woman also began to come to Singapore. They came to look for jobs. They were adventurous, independent, and surely had minds of their own. They were the pioneers of our female workforce. They came in the 20th century because it was easier to leave China after the downfall of the Qing government in 1911. At that time, China was extremely poor. People did not have enough to eat. The warlords were fighting each other. As a result, more and more Chinese women decided to leave China. Many of them did not even have relatives in Singapore. They would just come with friends and look for jobs. They worked as domestic servants as well as in factories, processing rubber or manufacturing pineapple, tobacco, biscuits and shoes. Some even worked at construction sites. Among them, nearly half were domestic servants. Most of the domestic servants were Cantonese. They came in their teens or early twenties. They looked after babies, did the cooking, washing and housework. 
Many of them remained single and stayed in women's coolie quarters with friends. Normally, they kept their hair long and wore it in a long braid or a bun. They wore white samfu tops and black trousers. They were called the matye or amas. Madame Leung Ah Ho was one of those domestic servants who came to Singapore in the 1930s. She worked as a domestic servant for 52 years. She is 70 years old now. She came because life in China was unbearable. The people in her village in Samsui, Guangdong, were poor farmers. They did not own the land they plowed. She remembered that sometimes she had only one proper meal a day. What the Life was hard in China then. It was so hard that we had to come here to earn a living. My father was old, so I came over to look for a job to support myself. At the same time, I could send money home to my father. When I first left my father, I was of course very miserable. I missed my family and had no skills. I was always told off by my employers to leave your beloved ones, your brothers and sisters was most heartbreaking. But at least I had a job and enough to eat. This was better than staying in China. There, there was no food and no job. It was 1935 and Madame Leung was then 18. She came with friends from the same village. They were very close. They addressed each other as sisters, or qi mui. She stayed with them in the women's coolie quarters in Siligi Road. There were 40 to 50 of them in the quarters then. After that, she moved to Malay Street. A year ago, she moved into this two-room flat in Beach Road with her three sisters. <laughs> She started working a month after she arrived. There were 14 members in her master's family. I had to wash and iron all their clothes. I cooked for them and washed the floor. In those days, we used raw soda to clean the floor. It was so corrosive that it ate into my hands and legs. I was miserable, but I had no choice. I had to work. Madame Leung was paid six dollars a month for that. After a year, she went to work for a Eurasian family in Tolok Kurao. There, she stayed for about 50 years. She has served four generations of the family. She only retired two years ago because of old age. According to Madame Leung, Chinese domestic servants usually stayed in their employers' homes. They went back to their coolie quarters on their rest days, or when they were out of a job, or to celebrate certain festivals, like the Lunar New Year, the Ghost Festival, Seven Sisters Festival, or Mid-Autumn Festival. Like many of her fellow sisters, Madame Leung did not get married, but she is not a martyr. According to her, a Matya had to go through a ceremony to declare her wish to remain single. Relatives and friends were invited to witness the ceremony, which resembled that of a wedding. Madame Leung did not go through this ritual. After serving others for more than half a century, how does she feel? <laughs> What's there to feel? If I have two meals a day, I'm content. What worries me most is illness. It's painful. If I can stay healthy, I'll be quite happy. I just want to live a quiet life, have enough to eat and do whatever I want to.